again, everyone. It's me, Marmacab, and you would not believe the week I have had. Okay, okay, I know that the title is a lot, and it may be ever so slightly clickbaity because they didn't actually troll me, but the thing is, it really felt like it for a hot minute there after everything I went through over the course of this week. Yeah, it, ooh. I should, I should elaborate a little bit more. So earlier this week, I received a, a paper letter from the IRS. Now, any of you guys who are old enough of tax doing age know that that is what nightmares are made of. The IRS is scary. They're like some big eldritch entity that you don't want to take notice of you because they're, no one knows, they do their thing, they're scary, they have a lot of power. And now, mind you, I'm always very, very, very careful with my taxes. I make sure that I am listing all of my income from all of my different various platforms. I double and triple check my math just to make sure I am paying them the right amount as an independent, in, like, self-employed person. It's a lot, but I digress. You can always, you can always blunder somewhere. Something can always go wrong. It's, you never know. And getting a message in the mail from the IRS, that's terrifying. So I'm sitting there going, oh my God, did I, did I blunder my math somehow? Did, did I mess something up? Oh no, am I being audited? <laughs> that was the first thing I panicked and I, I googled this letter that they gave me, which for those of you, if you ever get this, maybe this video can help you at that time. You'll, you'll see by the end of the story. So you don't have to. Maybe you can learn from my dumb dumb, and, you know, not, not freak yourself out unnecessarily. Um, it's called a 4883C is the type of letter. Um, I, I googled it. It said, you know, you're not being audited. So I'm like, cool. Awesome. Cause that's always a relief. Even if you've done nothing wrong, being audited is horrifying. Like it's, I don't know, the IRS is just scary, man. I don't play with them. <laughs> Uh, the type of letter that this was is basically they wanted to verify some of my personal information to protect my identity. Now, what makes me wonder about that is, okay, now did somebody, like, try and steal my identity? Or did I do something so wrong with my taxes that they're now suspicious that I'm even me? So I've got all these things going around in my head. I can't find much else about that. I mean, I probably could have Google searched more thoroughly, but I was just... There's a lot going on, and I'm like, oh god, okay. Who, okay, well then, you know what? It wouldn't have been so bad if I could have just called them, because that's what the letter stated, is that I needed, within 30 days of getting that letter, so a time limit, I needed to call the IRS number that they listed between their business hours, seven to seven, and then, and you know, that, that would be that. It wouldn't have been so bad if I could have just called them and immediately had all my concerns cleared, but of course, it couldn't be that easy. It just happened to be my luck to get this letter on the year that the stimulus checks are going out because apparently people are really curious where their stimulus checks are, so much so that they are calling the IRS on numbers that are completely unrelated to the stimulus checks just in hopes of talking to a real human person and not an automated phone tree. On the one hand, I can understand you, you know, being curious, where's my money and wanting to talk to someone because phone trees are a pain in the tuchus, okay? No one likes phone trees, no one likes robocalls, I get it. But on the other hand, stop it! People who are given a literal time limit aren't able to talk to human people on the specified line for them. I'm getting ahead of myself. So the day I got the letter, I want to say it was around like 3 p.m. Now mind you, they were open till 7, so several more hours before they were done for the day. So I'm like, okay, I'll give them a call. I call the number, I make it through. Now mind you, they got the most dramatic phone tree, okay? You gotta sit through a two and a half to three minute message every time you just wanna call the number telling you, have if you have this letter, you can go online. If you have the 4883, you have to stay here. Of course I couldn't get the kind that would just let me go online. And then they're like, oh, by the way, we cannot answer any stimulus questions yet. People still be calling anyway. Stop it. Stop it. But yeah, so it goes through this long message. Finally gets, okay, you know, your wait time may vary, blah, blah, blah. Okay, okay. We're sorry. 
Due to an unusual amount of calls, we cannot process your call at this time. Try again tomorrow. Goodbye. Click. What? Wait, you wanted me to call you within a, a, a limited time period. And you're, you're not even gonna let me go on hold. Okay, I realize now that this is probably because they have so many calls, they realistically would not be able to get through them in a day, but all the more reason. Stop calling the unrelated things about stimulus. This is a thing for these letters. Go away. Go away. You don't even go here. But I digress. So I'm like, okay, fine, whatever. It's 3 p.m. They probably got a whole bunch of people who called earlier in the day. And, you know, tough luck. I'm just too late. I'll call in the morning. So I... In the next day, you know, I do a couple things in the morning. I forget to call first thing. So it's about 10.30 a.m. But, you know, they open at 7. It's 10.30 a.m. They close at 7 p.m. Come on, it's got to be fine. We're sorry. Due to an unusual amount of calls, we cannot process your call at this time. Try again tomorrow. Goodbye. Wait, okay. That's two days now on my timeline ticking away, and you're not going to take my call again. Okay. Maybe 10.30 was too late. All right, so the day goes by. I'm, and at this point, I'm starting to get nervous because the more time you, you have these questions percolating and lingering in your head, the more they start to bother you, the more I start to go, did I mess something up? Did I screw the math up? Did I miss something? I don't think I did, but what if I did? Oh my God, or wait. Is someone, like, stealing my identity? Is that why I need to do this? Has somebody, like, opened a buttload of, you know, credit cards and loans and things in my name? Oh my god, and it, it's starting to percolate and really bother me. <laughs> so, you know, being able to talk to somebody would have really helped, but I digress. The next day, I try even earlier. I get up early that day. And again, I have a couple things to do, so I call them at 7.30. Only a half hour after them opening. It, you know, it should be fine. They've only been open a half hour. It's 7.30 a.m. They close in 11 and a half hours. It should be fine. We're sorry, but due to an unusual amount of calls, we can't process your phone call at this time. Please try again tomorrow. Goodbye. You were open for only a half hour, and you're telling me you already have too many calls to be able to take mine. Okay. Okay. So now I'm really starting to freak out, okay? I'm starting to think, oh my god, I don't know what this is. What if my identity's stolen? What if I screwed up my taxes? Oh my god, oh my god. And what now now they're worried then on top of that is what if I'm not able to call them within the deadline? They gave me a deadline. What if I try every day and I just can't get through to them? Oh my god. I'm starting to get real spooked now. Which finally leads us to today, this morning, I literally set my alarm clock for five minutes before the IRS opens. I literally, is still in bed, wake up at 6.55 a.m., get my phone ready, make sure I'm prepared to call the exact second it hits 7 o'clock. Now, mind you, I jumped the gun a little bit and I tried at 6.58 just to make sure there wasn't any, like, time zone shenanigans. And it was like, we're sorry, we're not open. Our hours are 7 to 7. I'm like, okay. So it is in the right time zone, you know, so I wait two more minutes. Exactly 8 o'clock. Finally. Finally, I get the message I've been waiting for. Your wait time will vary. Thank you for calling. Would you like us to call you back or remain on the phone? I decided, okay, I'll just have them call me back because I'm so nervous right now. If I sit here with the the hold music playing, I'm I'm gonna put my head through a wall. I'm <laughs> I'm jittery and I'm nervous. I have all my tax materials that were required, like from the letter. It told me I needed these forms and these forms, plus the letter printed out. I've got it all spread out on the table for me. I am pacing circles. I got my cup of coffee, which probably didn't help because I'm like, uh, I'm waiting and waiting and waiting, you know. But uh, so they, t I don't have the the hold music, fortunately. So I went on uh, the we'll call you back system. 
didn't help too much because now I'm just pacing without the music. It told me it was gonna be 20 minutes till they called me back. So I'm like, okay, cool, cool, cool. 20 minutes comes and goes. And now I'm starting to panic going, oh my God, should I have just stayed on hold? Because <laughs> are they not gonna call me back? Oh God, and it's already, it's already 7.20. So they're gonna be filled up for the day. Oh my God, I screwed up. Finally, about 7.30, my phone rings. So quickly I pick it up and they're like, Hello, this is the IRS callback program. Would you like to accept the call? To accept the call, press one. So I'm like, one, And then I just got the nicest lady in the world on the phone. So <laughs> like I was terrified and she could tell and she's like, oh sweetie, you don't you don't gotta be nervous. This ain't nothing to be nervous about. It's fine. And I'm just like, thank you for being nice to me. I'm just really spooked. She's like, oh, it's okay. I just need you to answer some questions for me. So for the next 20 minutes, you know, she asked me questions and then, you know, I looked over my, my paperwork and then, you know, gave her all the answers. After about 20 minutes of answering questions, she's like, all right, is it okay if I put you on hold again? I gotta plug this stuff into the system. So I'm like, yeah, that's fine. So, you know, about 10 more minutes pass. Now I have the hold music and I'm real glad that I didn't like stay on hold because there's something wonky with like the hold music because it, it plays elevator music for a little while and then it just goes <laughs> like it's like creepy like demon noises. So I think 20 minutes or, you know, 30 minutes of waiting for my my person would have with that scary sound it, it would have been too much it would have been too much <laughs> my soul would have ascended okay but uh, after about 10 minutes of waiting she finally gets back on the phone she's like miss i'm like yes like waiting waiting for the shoe to drop because she'd been a little too nice now i'm sus like what what's hmm but uh she informs me all right ma'am that was all you have a good day wait wait but that that's all? The, the, there's no problems? No, nope, not as I can tell. It's good on our end. No, no one's trying to steal my identity? No. Nope. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, not that I'm not that I'm upset about being kosher on my taxes and not having my identity stolen, but why? C can I ask why I was sent this letter? Since it doesn't really say in the letter why it was sent. Oh, yeah, don't worry about it, honey. Basically, every year we have a lottery of social security numbers. It's part of our taxpayer protection plan. If your social security number gets drawn from the pool, you get sent one of the letters and you gotta verify your information just to make sure it's really you. Oh, cool. Th thank you. Have a great day. Do I, do I need anything else are, are we done with the letter yep we're done with the letter you have a good day so i went through about five days of emotional turmoil racking my brain worrying that i screwed up somewhere or someone was trying to rob my life and identity all of that because i was the lucky winner of the lottery poll so i felt like boo boo the fool that being said though, I'm very glad that my taxes are fine and no one's trying to steal my identity. I am overjoyed that it was, that was all it was. It was just, wow, that was a lot. And it would have been super cool if in the letter they said, you've been chosen from the lottery or something to indicate why you're getting the letter because the letter straight up does not tell you that. And it's scary as hell. So. For any of you who are of taxpaying age, I hope you can you can learn from my torment. If you receive the 4883C letter from the IRS, don't poop your pants thinking you screwed up your taxes or someone's trying to hack your identity. You just won the lottery pull and it's just standard routine that they do every year. At least I can finally freaking sleep again. Oh my god. But yeah, that's what's going on in my life recently. I hope you at least got some entertainment out of that story because good lord, that that was a lot. I don't know. I'm I'm just glad it's a happy ending. 
Anyway, that's all I have time for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the story. I will see you guys again with more stories later on. But until next time, thank you again for watching and stay creepy, everybody.